This is Kristen Bell. And Adam Brody. And we're dating. In our new show, Nobody Wants This. Right, right. We're not really dating. No, in real life, we're married. Right, married to other people, not each other. Oh, this is complicated. Right, it's just like our love lives in Nobody Wants This, a show about what happens when a bold and sometimes provocative podcast host finds her unlikely match in a sweet traditional rabbi. You can watch every episode of Nobody Wants This now, only on Netflix. We are. We are. We are Cultivate. 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 We are Cultivate. Hello and welcome to a special mini-sode of Yield Crime, the show where Maddie and I discuss the funny, strange, and obscure crimes of yesteryear every Wednesday. This special bi-weekly segment is called Can You Crack the Cramp Word, which is slang for a difficult or obscure term, which I thought was very fitting. And joining me today is Courtney from the Book of the Dead podcast. And before we begin, I'd like to give her a chance to tell us a little more about herself and her show before we begin. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. Yeah. For our listeners who may be unfamiliar with you, you do the podcast with your mom, Lisa. So what inspired the two of you to start the podcast and like who came up with the idea initially? Okay. Yeah. So I do do it with my mom and she is not one for like horror. She's very like Disney coded, D- Disney, everything, everything has a happy ending. <laughs> and I grew up with a dad that loved anything to do with horror, anything to do with true crime. He's a big fan of like Aphrodite Jones. Okay. So I had gotten really into true crime podcasts and we were driving back from Virginia. We were, had gone like on a little mini vacation and I was so sick of listening to music we were on like in like bumper to bumper traffic and finally I was like can we can we listen to a podcast and she was like oh all right sure so I turned on a podcast and I didn't I didn't ease her into it I went like right in like John Wayne Gacy (laughs) and said we're gonna do this we're gonna do this And the whole time we're listening to it, I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's going to kill me. Oh, my God. Why did I do this to her? And when it was over, she was like, can we listen to another one? I'm like, "Uh, okay, (laughs) sure. (laughs) So that kind of like (laughs) piqued her interest because like from that point on, like I would hear her like pull up to the house after work and she had the volume so loud and it would just be like some true crime podcast blasting out of her car so I had been kicking around the idea of doing like a podcast myself because there were some issues that I had with like the true crime community like obviously not everybody but there are some that are like super unethical and I didn't like that so I'm like yeah I I want to do this and do Mm -hmm. it right so I'm painfully shy so I was like I do it by myself I was like can you do it with me please (laughs) She was like, yeah, sure. So we we did it. And that's how it happened. That's awesome. I love how you just like threw her like head first into like one of the most there notorious no serial deals. killers <laughs> like out there. Yeah, it's just like pushing her off a cliff, essentially. Like, here, here you are. And the fact that she was down with it is like pretty hilarious that she is still like... Yeah. I really like this. It's it's been a couple years now and she still loves her true crime podcast. She still won't watch like a true crime documentary. Like that's I think like the dramatizations are pushing it a little bit too much for her. But she enjoys, I yeah. guess, like the storytelling aspect. But then she gets so angry. <laughs> so like-, like I get that. Like with Maddie, she can watch like body mm-hmm. horror, like gore stuff. I can't do that. Whereas I can handle like more like the psychological thriller, like horror type stuff. And she can't do that. So it's like, we kind of flip flopped with the things that we are okay dealing with in a visual format. So like, I get that there, I mean, it is different to see it visually as opposed to just hearing it. Cause then you can, your mind can fill in the gaps if you don't know what's going on. 
and it's a little bit easier to deal with it if you don't have to see exactly like you can kind of like front of you. self filter what you're listening to and like i said she's yes. super like disney-fied so i know like she likes to imagine it, <laughs> it like has a happy ending even if it doesn't she's like no no like maybe maybe somewhere somehow <laughs> Bambi's mom comes back and it's fine and it's great. It's fine. <laughs> he finds her in another pasture somewhere. It's great. As you kind of alluded to, your show focuses on highlighting cases that really don't get as much media attention as some of the other ones, some of the more mainstream ones you hear about over and over and over again on true crime podcasts. So what draws you to a case? I think really for me, it's the lack of attention they get, or the fact that maybe certain cases should have gotten more. I covered one, it was Alexis Patterson. And, you know, people like are kind of familiar with her case. But around the same time that she disappeared, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Smart had disappeared. So no one cared about Alexis Patterson. It was all about Elizabeth Smart, who like rightfully so should have had that media attention on her but so yep. should alexis so that's kind of what drives me wild or the ones that have been cold for so long that everyone's forgotten about and like it's i i did one about a missing woman from canada and she's been missing like 40 years and it took like 10 years for them to put out a missing persons report for her oh my god i'm like how how has it been 10 years? Like, what do, what do you mean? No one noticed for 10 years that this 18-year-old girl just fell off the face of the earth? Like, what what are you talking about? Yeah. So those are the cases that, like, really kind of draw me in as opposed to the ones that are, like, so inundated with, like, media coverage. Like, mm-hmm. how many times can we cover, like, Ted Bundy or, yep. you know, Gacy or Manson? Like, there's... That, and that was the other thing that like drives me nuts is like you're it's all the focus is on the killer, but you wouldn't know their name if it weren't for the person that they killed. Exactly. As a fellow true crime podcaster, we all kind of at some point during our tenure or whatever as podcasters, we find that one case that really kind of sticks with us, mm-hmm. you know. Is there any one case in particular that has really either touched you or that you'd like to see solved? Yeah, it's one I covered a while ago, and it was the disappearance and subsequent murder of a young woman named Elizabeth Salgado. She was an immigrant to this country from Mexico. She had kind of found a kinship with some Mormons that had come to Mexico for like fellowship work, and she went to Utah. She was there for like a week. And she vanished. It's like she vanished off of a really, really busy street, which was baffling to me. And then they found her remains years later, close by in like kind of like a canyon national park kind of area. Sure. And to this day, like no one knows what happened. No one knows if she was murdered. No one knows if she was killed by accident. And I think it was like a year later now, it was a couple of years later, like last year, I think, her aunt went missing too. Oh. And they found her body. And they said, I think the, if I remember correctly, like the media said that it was like natural causes for her aunt or something like that, which didn't really make sense to me. I mean, I guess yeah. it could have been. I know she had struggled with her mental health, but it was it was just so bizarre that this young woman dies is potentially murdered or at least Mm -hmm. you know not die naturally and then her aunt meets the same face like fate a year or so later and that just i think about her constantly i look up updates on her case constantly just to see if there's any sort of resolution because i can't like i can't let her go Mm -hmm. for me it's and i might have said it at some point on the podcast it's the hinter murders that took place yeah i will never not want to know what happened like that case is so fascinating to me just there's all these pieces of like it's very odd it to me it seems very obvious that someone was in the house with them 
mm-hmm. when all the stuff went down and then like nobody knows who did it. But then to later learn that they're like, oh, we know who did it or we have a, an idea of who did it. But because their family still lives in this area, in this very small, secu- like secluded area, we don't want to say because it's going to upset the family. And it's like, no, no, they killed a lot of people. Like, it's okay to like let it, you know, like I think at this point, it's okay to just say this person did it for whatever reason. That really bothers me. It really yeah, bothers no, me. I I agree that that's another. There's so many cases that stick with me. That's one of the ones that like I. I've researched and like I know so well and it's like just it's been long enough enough people like literally died children mm-hmm. literally died like we can we can say who was responsible I mean it's it's not like we're gonna be punishing their descendants you know what I mean like it's it's just mm-hmm. just let us close the loop so that we know definitively who did it for their sakes you know what I mean like it's just mm-hmm. anyway I could talk about that forever but <laughs> That's not what we're here for. (laughs) Hi, guys. I'm Courtney. And I'm Lisa. And we are the hosts of The Book of the Dead, a true crime podcast based out of New Jersey, where we tell you about the most obscure cases that you may have never heard of. So join us in The Book of the Dead library for another chapter of The Book of the Dead wherever you get your podcasts. Bye, guys. I don't have any other questions. So if you are ready, we can move on to the slang term portion of the interview. Yeah, I'm scared. I was listening to like other <laughs> segments and I'm I, like, I went into this going, I'm going to be so good at this. Like, I'm so good at like critical thinking. And then I'm like listening to your other segments. I'm like, wow, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is this is one of those ones where it's like not even sometimes getting context clues really helps either. So I tried to prepare, but I don't think I'm I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. Maybe maybe you'll knock it out of the park. Who knows? Don't count your chickens yet. Okay. <laughs> Cuz remember, I can give you a sentence. Okay. So your first term is top off. Uh, my my brain's immediately going to like the modern use of it okay i need a sentence i need a sentence okay 36 were cast for death and only one was topped off i want to say like exonerated just based on the (laughs) sentence (laughs) only one but it could also mean like i'm thinking like it could also mean like if 36 were cast for death but one was topped off like one only one died like singled out the only one i feel like i'm overthinking it is that your final answer oh i think it's my final answer you're actually correct so top off means to be hanged or to be executed okay i overthought it a little bit but okay (laughs) (laughs) to your credit you did in a good way so And according to Green's Dictionary of Slang, which is a fabulous online resource for Victorian slang, this term was first introduced in 1718. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't want to be topped off. Let's just say that. Oh, no, I don't. You don't. No. Top top off my drink, but that's that's about it. (laughs) Yeah. And then I'm going to kill that drink. (laughs) So your second term is flash o lightning. Okay, again, I think I'm going to think too literal. All right, give me a sentence. Okay, it might not be helpful. Come, we'll go over and give you a flash o lightning. Give you a flash o lightning. So my brain wants to say, like, based on the sentence, it's like, like, I'm going to give you a flash of lightning. Like, I'm going to, like, give you what's coming to you. I'm going to punch you or something. I'm going to go with that. Like, to... To like hit someone, hurt someone, attack someone. Gotcha. It's actually a glass of gin. A glass of gin? Yeah. I mean, I guess when it hits your stomach, it's like a flash of lightning. Sure. Yeah. I sometimes feel like when you breathe it out, it kind of feels like a flash of lightning coming out of your mouth. But gin. I've had some bad experiences with gin. So (laughs) 
I'm just helping like, oh. in my soul. <laughs> I can I can taste the pine needle scent of the flash of gin. <laughs> oh, God. Well, that term, according to Green's Dictionary of Slang, was first introduced in 1789. Interesting. I feel like my answer was better. <laughs> I like yours too. Just like a just like a quick flash of lightning, like just like stunning somebody. I feel like it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. Just like a quick pop, and then. <laughs> They're like, oh, maybe maybe I shouldn't say that anymore, or whatever it was, whatever the context was prior to the flash of lightning to the face. I would like to thank Courtney for joining me today for Can You Crack the Cramp Word? And before we go, can you tell our listeners where they can find you on social media and when new episodes of your podcast come out? Absolutely. Can find us? literally everywhere uh, i think we're on like every streaming platform except pandora because no one uses pandora you can follow us everywhere on like all social media and we have new episodes out bi-weekly usually every wednesday unless the computer and i are fighting and then it's delayed but that's a very rare occurrence so every other wednesday gotcha and on that note, as always, I'm Lindsay, and I'll see you next time with another tale as old as grime. <laughs>